just with a little ebbing and flowing of breath. And just to spark some energy, but also clear some energy, I thought we'd do something a little bit fiery just to boost the energy. And then we'll get into some um, moderate paced movements so that we're not staying too long anywhere, but we're actually allowing there to be space to be breathe as well. So we're not moving too quickly, but we're not moving too slowly. So we'll find that rhythm in between that rise and fall of your breath. So close your eyes, sitting tall wherever you are. Pull the chin down towards the chest, just decompressing that upper, upper cervical spine, the neck and the shoulders. You can almost shrug your shoulders back and down actively. Take a deep breath in and a sighing breath out. Gradually nurture the head back up to neutral so you feel your ears align with your shoulders. And that might mean also bringing your ribs back over your hips, feeling your ears draw back over your shoulders. There's a balanced center point within the spine that's naturally curvy. So we don't want to eliminate the curve by sitting stiffly straight up, but we want to find a softening to the skin. We'll just take a moment to set an intention, a dedication or commitment for your time on your mat. And with ebb and flow, that balanced action of rise and fall, the stiram and sukham asana, the effort and the surrender, the shiva and your shakti, your masculine and your feminine energy, where your palms meet, bringing them to meet. Take a deep breath in. An emptying breath out. Set any dedication, commitment, or wish to the universe that you are thinking in this moment. No matter how insignificant it may seem in the moment, our intuition is keen and learning to hear it and follow it is also ideal for finding our next space where we're moving into. Bow your head to your heart. As you release your hands back to your lap, you can blink your eyes open for a moment. We'll just switch up the seat. If it's comfortable to sit on your heels, you can always have a cushion underneath your knees or under your ankles. Uh, like I've got this blanket here, finding a balanced point to sit back on your heels, hands out in front. Again, palms open for inspiration, palms down to ground. If it's the end of your busy day, grounding is good. We'll take some Kapala body breaths here, which are sharp, quick exhalations. So an out, out, out from the low belly, keeping the rest of the body quite still. Now you're welcome to keep the hands on the lap, or if you're feeling energetic or want to energize the shoulders, bring the hands to interlace, point your fingers to the sky. Stretch up out of the waist, take a half breath in, through the nose, exhale. And exhale, 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 exhale. The sharp, sharpness of the breath is key. The speed is up to you. But find a rhythm. Try not to speed up and slow down, but stay consistent. This breath is really key to just clearing any energetic that might be standing in your way from your day or what's been standing in your way to have faith in what's coming your way.
exhale fully. If the arms are overhead, keep them, take a deep breath in. Pause at the top of your inhale. And as you exhale, release the hands and let them come back to your lap. Simply observe a shift in the energy. The way our mind and our body and our brain work together. We often confuse our brain as our mind and they are different things. Our brain is the system to control our, our motor neurons, our, our movements, our actions. But our mind is something we observe, that thinking, that almost like we can watch ourselves outside of or inside of ourselves. Notice the narrative that might show up and to help clear it, we'll take a second bout of Kapala body. The narrative is sort of the, the words in the background, the things that often limit us, our limiting beliefs or thoughts. And let your narrative in the background for this one be the mantra Sat Nam. This will help bring focused attention. Sat Nam simply means truth or planting little seeds of truth. Reach the arms up overhead. You know, the truth of your courage, your strength, your inner resilience. Take a half breath in and begin. And sat, nam, sat. Nam, sat, nam, sat, nam. Keep going. And the moment you're finding if the arms are overhead, there's a challenge, there's a moment of wanting to give up or give in, stick with it and see if you can get over the mental hurdle, that mental image of yourself, like you're leaping over a hurdle. Exhale fully, take a really big breath in all the way up to the fingertips if they're overhead. Pause, as you exhale, release the shoulders, release the hands back to your lap. Taking the moment to observe. But our pranayama practice is amazingly energetically shifting. A couple minutes of breath work to bring back our balanced inhale to exhale. And you can switch up your seat and come into a cross-legged position. We'll do an equal inhale, equal exhale here. So the hands will come to the knees and just a seated cat-cow variation. So the exhale to come back, Inhale through the nose, leaning forward, looking up. Exhale, rounding out. Inhale forward. Exhale out. Now this is a Bistrika style breath and we'll start slow and gradually increase the rate. Now if you're feeling called to right away, go a little faster, by all means, feel free to do so. What we want is an equal in to an equal out. So when we speed up, often the breath gets a little shallower, but the focus here is that there's an equal in to an equal out. The depth is up to you.
as you find yourself speeding up, almost like how a train starts moving down the tracks. It begins with slow turns, builds momentum, builds energy, and in turn, creates some speed. Now it's not about going fast, not about being consistent. About 10 more here. Empty fully, sit tall. Take your fingertips down by your sides like little roots of a plant growing down into the soil. As we approach these warmer days, we see the plants grow and we see them peak above the surface. But what we often forget is the growth below, the deepening of your roots. Perhaps you're currently deepening your roots in your relationship or in your family uh, connections or your work, perhaps just deepening the roots to yourself. Take a full inhale, an emptying exhale. And we'll finish this breath set with a breath hold. So inhale fully, pull the chin down and draw your shoulders back. Jalandhara Bandha, belly button to spine, Uddiyana Bandha, holding the base of the pelvic floor, Mula Bandha. So four, three, two, Slow exhale through the nose, lifting the chin, releasing your locks. At the bottom of the exhale, hold the breath out. Chin down, shoulders back, belly up. Breathe in. Empty out. Bring the eyes to open. And let's bring the feet around to flat in front. And we'll just lie onto the back for a moment. Letting the head go to neutral, draw your knees into your chest, circle your ankles, point and flex your feet. Many directions. If you've been on your feet today, this should feel really good. If you haven't moved your feet too much, this should also feel really good. And then bring your knees and feet together, hands on your knees and just circle your knees one direction. Deep breath of Ujjayi here. That whisper in the base of your throat, that little reminder, that subtleness of that control in which you have to hold or release the breath on your command and your time. We don't realize sometimes the control that we have and the support we can give our body by increasing or decreasing the rate of breath. We'll spin the knees the other way. And we want to keep our momentum even tonight, working that balanced action, not too quick, not too slow, but finding that space to breathe and open up. When you come back to center, catch behind the thighs. Lift the legs to give you some momentum to start to come up and then roll back again. And then roll up and roll back. You might not get all the way up, just to the edge, roll back, two more. This will bring some vitality, some energy to your spine, to the nervous system. And then you'll either cross your legs or sweep your legs to one side and come onto all fours. As you come onto all fours, get anchored into the tops of the feet. We'll start with pointed toes. And then let your ribs come forward, your shoulders draw back. 
And as you round your back, lift up the feet and tuck the toes, chin to chest, tuck the tail under, pressing into the feet. And inhale to lift forward, shoulders come back, little cow spine, and exhale to round it out. Just one more like that. Inhale to pull up and through. And exhale to round it out. As you return to a tabletop, sit your hips onto your heels, perhaps sliding the hands one hand distance forward. Let your forehead drape the mat. Kiss the floor. Honoring those who walk before us. And then lifting the knees. Pedal out the feet in your downward facing dog. And to get anchored into our feet and our hands, we'll do a little what I call around the world. So you'll lift one hand, doesn't matter which one. I'll start with my left and then put it back down and lift your left foot and put it down and lift the right foot. You can either bend the knee or take the leg behind you and then put it down and lift the right hand and put it down. So we're starting to incorporate all limbs with that hand again, with the foot, either straight back or from the knee, from the ankle, lift the right foot, lift the right hand, and then go in the other direction. So start with the right hand, the right foot, the left foot, the left hand, the right hand, the right foot, the left foot, the left hand. Once you come all the way around, walk your hands to your feet. So you end up at the back of your mat in a forward fold, anchoring through the four corners of the feet, the inner edge of the big toe, outer edge of the pinky toe, inner edge of the heel, outer edge of your heel. Drop your head. Full breath in, exhale, fold all the breath out. Chin pulls into chest. So they're actively folding. We're not just dangling in our forward fold, but we're pulling in our heart to our, uh, our chest to our thighs. Almost like your heart is coming out the back of your spine. So at the back body. Then lift halfway hands to shins, soften the knees. Take a full breath cycle here to equalize the blood flow from head to heart, heart to hips. Then slide the hands onto your hips, pull the hips back, lean into your toes and come all the way up through your heart, through your head to the top, Tadasana. Full breath in, sighing breath out. Now I'll play with just a touch of balance here. Hands on the hips. Bend your left knee so your left heel comes up, but keep the mound of the foot down like you're wearing a little high heel shoe foot. Now the transition here is going to be to straighten the left leg and lift the right heel and then lower the left one down. It's kind of like you're walking on the spot. A pair of high heel shoes to a pair of flats. <laughs> Just go side to side. And I want you to start to feel for that place in the middle. So if we just go back and forth, we're sort of speeding through or skipping over. So rather than skip over, lift both heels high and then one heel down. And then both heels high and one heel down. Up, down, keep going side to side. It's a really great activation for the calf muscles, for the limbs below our hips, but feeling anchored in the mounds of the feet, feeling balanced front to back, back to front. And one more. And then release the heels, release the arms. Sweep up, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Lift halfway, inhale. And let's lower the knees to the mat. So reach the fingertips forward, stand up into the center of the mat on the knees, inhale. Hands through center, exhale. Slide the hands forward. So you're in a plank position with the knees low and lower your chin and your chest between your thumbs. Now, if it doesn't meet the floor, that's fine. You'll slither right through to Cobra. Inhale and then release down, exhale. Tuck the toes. 
Press up into puppy dog, hips back over heels. Forehead kisses the mat. And then lift the hips to the sky, downward facing dog. Full breath in. Full breath out. Take your right leg straight back and up. Bend your right knee, bring it forward to a lunge position. Keep the back knee lifted, scoop the arms overhead. Bend the elbows out to the left and to the right side. So you're in a cactus arm position. If your back heel feels as though it's sinking back, push off those toes, not to send your heart forward, but to accentuate the front of the hip. You can always bend the knee to reduce that pressure. Put a little deeper into your right knee. Bring your hands to your heart. Hinge forward as you breathe in. You'll feel the left leg get a bit longer. And then you have the option to take left hand to the floor, right arm to the sky, or left elbow outside of your right knee for a deeper expression. Your choice. We're going to do this twice on each side. So you could do the more open variation once, and you can do the more compressed variation. Or you can do both the same. But go into your feet here and really feel the earth quality, that groundedness, the roots of the plant as you envision from the beginning, and then perking up through your heart, the center of your chest towards your thumbs. The eyes can look down for balance. You want to challenge your balance, you'll look over your fingertips or over your shoulder. Now we come to untwist, plant the hands and step to plank. Breath in. Breath out, lower, chin to chest, or chin, chin and chest to the floor, slither through to cobra if you'd like, or up dog if you'd rather, and downward facing dog. Take your right leg to the sky, oh sorry, left leg to the sky, and step your left foot forward to find the lunge. Scoop all the way up, breath in, hands to heart breath out. If you're like me, you tend to sink back into that heel, find the energy to go up. You can always bend the back knee to soften the front of the hip. Keep straightening and straightening over time. That'll cause you to go up. So don't forget to bend the front knee. Now we'll hinge forward. Option to take right hand to the floor, left arm to the sky or elbow outside of your knee. Now again, you might sink back into the heel when you get there. Push off those back toes. Find that depth of breath that you started with all the way to the base of the lungs, into the back, into the kidneys. Either looking to the side, looking down for balance, or looking over the shoulder to challenge your balance. One more full breath here. Connect with the feet. As you untwist, bring the hands down, step to plank. Let's inhale here and then chin and chest between the thumbs. Slither through to cobra. And release back puppy dog to down dog or right to downward facing dog. Right leg to the sky, inhale. Step the right foot forward, exhale. And that second time around, coming up, arms to cactus, hands to heart, feel into that back foot, energize the leg, inhale forward, elbow to knee or hand to the floor. And if you did one variation previous, maybe switch it up, maybe keep it the same. If it's a position, a pose you're working with, Keeping that consistency is key. Two more breaths. Sit the hips low, draw the right hip back, left hip forward. Bring your upper hand down, frame the foot, step to plank, knees up or down, lower chin and chest. 
cobra or up dog. Downward facing dog. Left leg to the sky. Step the left foot forward. Find the lunge. Elbows to the sides wide. And then hands to heart. Hinging forward, think up and over, whether the hand is coming to the floor or the elbow side of the knee. You choose and then you activate. So choose activation, choose that balanced action. Now, if you tend to overactivate, you over amp, choose to soften. And each posture is designed to show our imbalances, to give us that gift of feeling and expressing through different ways. To surrender does not mean to give up. It's to offer yourself in the moment the grace to just be with the sensation, be with your breath. Bring the left hand to frame the front foot. Step back to plank. Knees up or down, lower halfway or all the way. Chin and chest can touch the floor if they do. Slither to cobra or up dog. Puppy dog. To downward dog. Deep breath in, sighing breath out. <sighs> Twisting the spine, moving our joints in lots of ways. Let's step or hop to the top of the mat. Feet together, lift halfway. Forward fold. Press to rise, come all the way up, and hands to heart center. Let's move through um, a classic sun salutation B, which is just a vinyasa flow with a warrior one. I really want to focus on the length of our breath and sort of like an orchestra dancing through the movement. Inhale to reach, exhale to bow forward. Halfway lift, breath in. Step back to plank. Lower chaturanga. Up dog or cobra, shoulders back. Downward facing dog. Right leg to the sky, inhale. Step it forward, warrior one. Exhale. Inhale to rise. Let's stay on the exhale for three. Connect to the feet. Imagine you're pulling them towards each other rather than pushing the mat apart. Eyes focused. Strong, firm, and soft in the joints. Let's bring the arms wide, hands to the floor. Step to plank, chaturanga, up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Left leg to the sky, step the left foot forward, warrior one, heel comes down, inhale to rise, stay for three. Just long enough to tap in a little further, but not get so caught up in our checklist box of being in the pose and its prime expression. Be in your primal expression. What do you feel in this moment? Take the arms wide, hands to the mat, step to plank, chaturanga, up dog, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, sighing breath out. Stretch back, inhale, look forward, step or hop, top of the mat. Halfway lift and fold it through. Press to rise, come all the way up and sit into chair pose, Utkatasana, hands at your heart. Pull the chin in towards the chest, again, lengthening that mid neck. This is a good attraction. If we tend to look up or look down a lot, we want to transition through that zone and then find center. 
So pull the chin back, eyes come to neutral, chest comes up, hips go lower. Take a full breath here, forward fold, hips to the sky, hands to the mat. And lift halfway. If you have a block, maybe bring it into play. So you have something to lean into and sweep your right leg back behind you and to the far left edge of your mat. So from a front facing position, you're crossing behind your leg. So it's sort of a crisscross over. You can bring that foot as far back or as far forward as you like. I like about halfway. Bring your block more between your feet, so centered to the left. Sink through your heels so you feel your right hip draw back. I want to consider here in this position that if we were in an eagle pose, the legs would be in a similar place, that they're wrapping one another. They wouldn't be as straight, but we're starting to create a connection to the outer hip. You can take your left hand up to your hip, tug the hip back and melt your heart into a forward fold if that serves you. You have something to lean into, either your hand or your head if it reaches. You're leaning down into that space. Tip some weight forward. Naturally, the body is going to tip into the left foot. So push off your left foot and try to sink through your right heel. Yeah, keep the breath moving here. Now your right hand is light, though it might be on the block or on the floor. You might bring it up and catch your right hip, pulling both hips back and equal. Wherever you are, breathe two more breaths. Soften the joints, be strong in the muscles, soft like water to flow through with your breath. And lifting just halfway up, lean into your left foot, bend the knee a little here, unwrap your right leg, big toes touch, half lift, inhale, bow forward, exhale. Press to rise, go all the way up, arms open, reach for the sky, and hands to heart center. To the other side, we'll inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Lift halfway and sweep your left leg around behind to the far edge of your mat and the heel comes down as if your feet were still together. And if they wanna to be together, go pinky toe to pinky toe is another option. This wider variation is just giving us a little more access to lengthen our lower back. Really common to shorten one side here. So take your right hand into your right hip and pull, if you slide your thumb into that hip crease, pull straight back. Let your heart melt forward. Left hand can come to the floor or it'll come up to the other hip so that you're not twisting the opposite way further. Of course, when we fold more weights in that front foot, so sink back through your left heel. You can stay in a halfway lift here, no problem. Listening to the body and its messages through the breath. Keep anchoring back through that left foot behind you more and more, like you're pulling your feet towards one another as opposed to pushing them away from center. Gradually lift back up halfway. Bend into your right knee, sweep the left foot around to meet your right. 
half lift, inhale, bow forward, exhale. Sweep the arms wide, come all the way up to standing and hands to heart center. Now that was an expression of the leg behind. So let's bring the leg around in front into our ego legs. You'll bend both knees here, dropping back into our hips. You'll anchor into your left foot and rather take the right leg behind, we'll bring it up and over. As it comes up and over, the tendency will be to bring your right hip forward. Draw your hip back, outer pinky toe to outer shin or behind your calf muscle if it feels okay on your knee and doesn't drive your hip too far forward. So if you hug the pinky toe down, funny enough, ego is harder when we don't do our arms. So let's do our arms to match. Reach up, inhale, right arm under, left arm over. You can have the elbows high, but shrug the shoulders down. Backs of the hands towards each other. If they meet, catch the upper thumb. Set your gaze, hug in. And release both arms, both legs, not here too long. Take a breath and let it go. Bend both knees, shift onto your right foot, left leg high, up and over the right. As you hug it in, if you've got a block, use it. Hug the outer pinky toe to outer shin or toes around behind. Notice the hips and that hip twist. Keep the hips both pointed forward. Hug in, not in a way that's tight and muscly, but in a way that's like when you see a bird holding on to the tiniest branch, it's holding on just enough to stay there but not so much that it breaks the branch. Take the arms up and then left arm underneath the right. Like in life, when we hold on to things too tight, it's like inevitable it will cause us pain or discomfort mentally, emotionally, or physically. And if we soften our grip and give it space, room to breathe, room to move, even within ourselves, give yourself space. Release the arms, release the legs, stand tall. Tadasana, breath in, sighing breath out, sweep up, inhale, forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. And step back, left foot, warrior two, back heel comes down, <clears throat> and arms cartwheel open. One of the greatest hip openers, but often overlooked as a hip opening, is this position. Bring your hands to your hips so we don't fire the shoulders too much. Draw the front of your pelvis up. So it's like you're trying to pick up the front of the pelvis and the back of your pelvis to neutral, but you're pushing it forward. So a little deeper into your right knee, but feel for your outer pinky toe behind you. That might cause you to lean back, come back over center. Even if you look straight down your body, ears, shoulders, hips are stacked. Then look over your shoulder to your fingertips and spread your wings. Find the softening here. I like to, uh, when I've taught this pose in large classes and big groups, say, oh, we're gonna hold this pose for 10 minutes. What would it feel like to be here for 10 minutes? And that's usually when people give up. <laughs> so even the thought of 10 minutes can create a reaction. Know that you're able, if you're willing, to feel into the softening while maintaining strong. Last one here. And straighten your front leg fully. Let's take a triangle so we let the hip tilt. 
drawing underneath, extending the torso. Your right arm will come to your hand to inner shin, left arm to the sky. If you look down the front of your body, you'd see your toes. So if you can't see them, you might be leaning back. Pull the left hip back. Like you're between two walls. Anchor to the feet, pull them towards each other and float back up. Warrior two for one breath. Cartwheel the hands to the mat, square the hips and step back to three-legged dog. Bend your upper knee and open up your hip. Now, if it's calling you to flip your dog here, you wanna get a little upside down and backwards, feel free to do so. Otherwise, stay with the leg in the sky. You won't be here too long, but if you come around, toes both point back and your arm extends forward. Keep the hips lifted, spin your left foot around, kick back up to three-legged dog. Legs straight back behind you, then lower your right foot down. High plank, inhale. Knees up or down, exhale, chaturanga. Up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Full breath in. Full sigh out. Bend your knees, look forward, step or hop, top of the mat, halfway lift, and fold it through. Rest to rise all the way up, and hands to heart center, full breath out. Tadasana, knees together, big toes touch, shoulders shrug down. Inhale, extend in celebration. Exhale, bow forward in honor. Halfway lift. Right foot steps back to warrior two. Heel comes down, arms cartwheel up front to back. Again, think left upper thigh spiraling open. So your left hip is opening up. Now the tendency, bring the hands back to your hips, is that our front hip will drop. So pull the hip up. If you can find the fingers into the bone, pick up your hip. If it means you lean back for a minute, that's okay. You'll correct the upper body once the hips are neutral. Sit in, see the inner edge of your knee, your big toe. Float your arms. Start the clock, 10 minutes. <laughs> that's for real. But imagine, right? What would it be like? What would it feel like to go through those waves? Those waves of breath, those waves of surrender, the waves of energy, the ability to move through your frustration, move through the anger. Stand in your truth, sat nam. Eyes to fingertips, see inside what's occurring, what needs to shift. You're not a statue, don't be one. Be living, be breathing, adjusting without fidgeting. Straighten your front leg and then tilt the pelvis so you're coming forward out of your waist, back of the hand to the inner shin, arm to the sky. If you look down the front of your body, you'll swing your right hip back behind you slightly. Not that far. You can look down to the side or up. If your front knee has locked out, unlock it. Work for the energy. Draw the prana out of the ground, the energy from the earth. And float back up to warrior two. One breath. Cartwheel the hands to the earth. Step back, three-legged dog. Bend your upper knee. Staying here, or if the urge is there to flip your dog, you're spinning your foot around. Both feet point to the back. If you need to sit for a moment to set, that's okay. But lift your hips, look back, stretch open.
Then turn your right foot around, pick up your left foot, three-legged dog. High plank, lower the foot, chaturanga, all the way or halfway, up dog or cobra. Puppy dog, let your head rest. Keep your toes tucked, let your forearms relax. Lifting just enough to come into a half pigeon position. So you'll either lift up into down dog. Lots of people like that transition. Sometimes it's nice to keep the knee low and be more in a plank and just float the knee forward. So we'll go left knee to left wrist, left foot up the right edge of the mat. As your knee comes down, you can point or tuck your back toes. And if you're having some balance challenges of staying level, use a block or something to support your hip. Sit up tall at first. And then think up and over, like you're going over the wave, over the hurdle of breath. As you come forward, come to forearms. Now you can either hold the head at neutral here or widen your elbows, melt your ribs down. They're gonna rest on that calf muscle and let your head rest either on the backs of the hands or all the way to the floor, reaching your arms way out in front of you. Playing in your variations of pigeon, finding those subtle changes like if the toes are tucked or pointed, still push slightly down into that foot to feel the energy rebound up through your hip. There's a simplicity to this position, but notice when you get complacent where you just go there to a familiar place and you just stay there. Rather try to explore a little bit in your half pigeon. Maybe it means coming up and staying a little higher with a little tug of your left hip back. Focus on pressure through the wrist creases if the forearms are on the floor to lift the back of your heart up. Not to harden, not to round, just to stay in that floating space. And gradually, wherever you are, you'll come back up onto your hands, tuck your back toes. You either just lift the knee and slide your left foot back or go into downward facing dog, pedal out the feet. Setting up on the other side, left leg straight in that plank, modified or downward dog, swing the knee forward and bring the foot up the edge of your mat until the hips come to neutral. Try to sit tall at first. I like to walk the back knee further back. Maybe use a prop under your hip. And then hinging forward, either to palms or coming to forearms, but reaching over. It's like you're going up and over the hurdle in front of you rather than diving underneath it and pulling back. Widen the elbows, perhaps reach the arms way out in front. If the shoulders feel tight there, then take the arms wide like cactus arms, but in a rested phase. Let 
deep release with a subtle curiosity, pressure through the left toes, creates a rebound effect through your right hip. Gradually walk your hands back underneath, take your time. Lift the hip and slide back to either downward dog or in the plank position or pedaling out the knees. And you'll walk your feet forward, coming into a seated position with your feet around in front. Make sure you have room behind you, float the arms, take a tall breath in, and then roll the spine out like you're trying to take your head further back and then vertebra by vertebra, you'll release all the way down till the back of the head touches. Keep your feet where they are. You'll have a tendency to wanna to pull them in right away. Just keep them where they are. Take your arms out to the left and right. And we did some crossovers with our legs. So you'll take your left leg over your right. And you'll draw your right foot way over to your left behind you. And that'll naturally sweep your knees to your right side. You can always shimmy your right hip underneath you a little further. And you can stay exactly as you are here. Just soften the back of your heart, the back of your rib cage the back of your head and your jaw. Our body is always giving us the subtle signs, the tightness in the fists, clenching in our jaw. It might be subtle, but it's there when we're under stress or tension in life, it shows up in our physical body. Taking time to breathe, to listen, to become more aware of what's needed in the moment, what needs to shift. With your right foot, draw it back into center of the mat. That'll bring the knees back to center, hips to center. Unwrap the legs, go the other side, right leg over left. Left foot way over to the far right edge of your mat. Let the knees fall to the left. Deep breath here. Sighing breath out. Empty the vessel into the parts of your day that are finished, complete. All you have and need is right here, right now. Press your left foot into the floor, swinging the knees back into center. Unwrap the legs, draw the knees into your chest. You can happy baby here or just go right into Shavasana. Final rest. Palms fall open, feet fall apart. Sighing wave of breath through the whole body.
Take one last deep inhale and a sighing exhale to soften your shoulders, your arms, the backs of your hands, the belly, the breath, the hips, the thighs, the knees, the calves, the ankles to the feet. Let everything be weighted to the earth. And as your front body is open to receive the messages from above, you stay grounded to the earth through your back body in that anchored state. Like Stiram and Sukham Asana, like Shiva and Shakti, finding the balance between two worlds. Feel free to stay here as long as you need. When you're ready to move, you'll do so with the presence and awareness. The grace of your breath. Recall that staying longer in your Shavasana is a true gift to your mind, to your body, stay as long as you need there. You can place your hands on your heart and your hands into Anjali Mudra at heart center. Reconnect to the balance of the breath through the mind and the body. Namaste.